So good morning, everyone. This is the Perio Teaching and Learning Call for April 7th. I'm Charles Bristo from Illinois State. Um, and let's see, announcements. Um, Wilma, who is usually our queen of announcements, isn't here today. So I'm just going to throw a couple things out there that I am aware of um, that have happened since we last got together. Number one is that um, version 21.0 has been released. So that's a good thing. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that they have extended the um, call for proposals for Open Aperio 2021 until April 9th which is the day after tomorrow. So get your proposals in there. And if I can find the link, where's that email? Oop, that's not the right one. Link. There it is. <coughs> I'm gonna Post it in the chat and the ether notes. So, Perio. Oops. Sorry, I'm having trouble talking and typing notes at the same time here. To April. Does anybody else have any announcements? Guys are all very quiet this morning. I'm assuming everyone can hear me okay. We can hear you, Charles. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. I was starting to feel like I was talking to a vacuum. <laughs> Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> Thank you, Ferris. Um, All righty. If there are no other announcements or updates, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move on to our JIRAs for today. <laughs> Thanks, Eric, Heather. <clears throat> I'm going to copy this in. And I don't know if we have anybody from the core team present on this call to talk about this, because this is one, this is a new one by me. I'm not familiar with this. <clears throat> Disable instance-wide option to share rubrics. <clears throat> So I'm not exactly sure what the core team wanted <clears throat> the TNL group to weigh in on. So feature request to allow people to kind of restrict how their rubrics are shared because right now if you share a rubric <clears throat> everybody can see it um, so there's a suggestion to create a new property um, where they can either be shared with visible to everyone as it is by now by default <clears throat> shared only to site members and also to the owner and any other site to be able to copy it and none Shared rubrics are visible only to the owner in the site or in any other site. Mm -hmm. 
generally speaking, I think having more control is a good thing. But I'm also wondering about what the situation is where someone wants to share a rubric with just a few people and a bunch of people they don't want to share it with are just sitting there waiting to pounce on it. Um, that <clears throat> I'm having trouble picturing this. Right. Um, <clears throat> I mean, in some ways, I'm almost thinking if it would be Sorry, I started thinking to myself. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that the, the one kind of analogous thing I can think of in Sakai is question pools and how they're shared. And right now, the only way you can share a question pool to someone else who is a member of the site that you are currently working in. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, the sharing of question pools trips up a number of my instructors. Instructors oh, well, are yeah. really pretty good about navigating other Sakai things. Yeah. So I'm not sure I want to <laughs> add those to rubrics. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the thing with it, the big difference with question pools is they're tied to the user, not to the site, which, which I think is what really throws people off. And rubrics are tied to a site. So it would it would actually work somewhat differently. Um, and I could also see an argument for having analogous sharing properties across a number of tools, just so people can figure out this is how stuff is shared in Sakai. That there's a solid argument to be made for that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the idea of being able to limit sharing is a good one, certainly. Um, I need to get, get logged in here. Oh, good. <clears throat> Anybody else have any comments about this or thoughts? Well, yeah, it's definitely messy um, because right now, since you know anybody that shares a rubric, um, there's now just we've we've got this going on. We've kind of been encouraging people not to necessarily share rubrics, but they've done it anyway. They never listen to us, um, so now we have this huge mass of shared rubrics, and they're not even sorted in a reasonable way. It's hard to find anything in that list. Um, <clears throat> So it's definitely an issue that will only get worse with time as more people share rubrics. Um, even if they just want, even if their only intent is to share it with themselves so they can copy it to a different course um, of their own, it still ends up sitting out there and they don't necessarily then retract the sharing so that it just stays sitting out there for everyone. Like I said, since no one was from the core team, core call group is here, it's hard to say exactly what they wanted us to to weigh in on. Yeah, right. There's no search either. There's no search and there's no real sorting possible on the shared rubrics page. Um, so I guess 
what the the question I would ask is is what kind of um, levels of of sharing <clears throat> do you think are appropriate? <clears throat> Anybody? Matt or Tiffany, were you on the core call? It talked about this particular Jira. No, I don't remember hearing about this Jira. Okay. Because in the Etherpad notes, it it's labeled as core team. So, yeah, I haven't heard about this at all. Okay. <clears> hmm. <throat> well, I mean, to to my way of thinking, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, it would make sense for me to be able to share a rubric just with myself so that I can use it in my other courses, but not necessarily share it with anybody else. Um, share, obviously, share it with everyone should still be an option. And then there's probably ought to be something somewhere intermediate in there, but exactly how to define that is kind of where I'm, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I could see two options. One option would be to share it with everyone else that's in the course, which I think is what's suggested in the note in the, or in the site, um, or to be able to individually just name someone to share it with. So what's the current behavior? It shares it system-wide with everybody? Yes. See, I would think that you'd want features more like tests and quizzes, where tests and quizzes, you can go into your site for question pools and specify yep. users that you want to share your pool with. Um, and so you could share it with everyone in the site, or you could share it with just a particular instructor or other, t you know, other instructor or TA in the site. Right. But but they do have to be a member of the site. Right. They do have to be a member of the site. And I think that would be fine. I mean, yeah. if, if you need to share it with your colleagues, you could create a project site that you add the tool to and add your colleagues oh. to that site. Yeah, good they point. They don't have to be a, a course site. As long as there's a way for the users to specify who um, gets to access the rubric after it's shared, And I think having the model from question pools would be a good place to start because that already exists. So that could be something that developers could potentially look at for uh, inspiration to how to develop this. I would think that it would be better. I mean, this this um, Jira is talking about an institution-wide property. I would prefer it to be a user chosen property. So a checkbox when I create a rubric, share it with everyone at the institution or share it with just specific people in my site. Right, and, and I think Yeah, it's not clear to me. I 
if they mean this to be something that the user can select. Um, well, that's not what it sounds like from 42956. It sounds like institutions do not want instructors to be able to share their rubrics. So they want to block sharing, uh, global sharing for their institution. But I think it would be nice if the instructors could control that. So when you go to create right, I see what you mean. or whatever, you have a checkbox that says, I want to share this with uh, instructors in this site. And then, then the option, even finer grained, who you want to share it with. Right. And then the other option would be, I want to share it with everyone at the university. Um, iRubric has sort of a similar thing where they have like a, a global rubrics repository that people can share either at their university right. or in fact with all universities using the tool in the world. Um, and I think they can also sort of share it among individual users as well. I, I'm not positive on that because uh, I haven't looked at that recently, but I know there's definitely like a rubric repository that people can share. Right. Um, rubrics both institutionally and globally. Uh -huh. But I think if there were a site-wide sharing option for users to do, that would cover the departmental use case as well, because the yeah. department could create a site that contains all of their instructors, and then they would simply share with that site. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense. So maybe this needs to be broken out into a couple of JIRAs. So feature request number one, allow option for instructors to share with a particular uh, site. Hold on. Course or project site. And then step two, allow institutions to specify um, via a property which type of sharing is possible either uh, global uh, site or um, or neither i guess i mean I don't know. but a checkbox for the user to select when they go to share that it would be either site or institution okay Tiffany, can you add that as a comment to the jira i mean i just put one in about the tnl review but i didn't cap i wasn't able to capture all of what you just said if you could put that in that would be useful and appreciated Any other comments on that one? Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking at the list if there's anything in particular that we want to. I'm not sure why this one's listed as carryover to the 14th. That's weird. They're not meeting next week.
Well, I guess we can just keep going in order. So this next one is a feature request for Samago to improve assessment type functionality. Tiffany, this yes, was... This was Go a ahead. conversation we were having a while back that we had sort of a to be continued on because uh, it got quite complicated. Um, and I think that Wilma was leading that, uh, wanted to continue leading that, I don't know. Um, okay. She's still interested in participating in that discussion. All right, then maybe we should let that one go for the moment. Since she is not here today. Right, that's what I was thinking. You know what, let's bring, I think let's bring up this other one. Okay, 43155 work log tab in assignments. Hello? Yes. I was about to show this PR here today, but uh, sadly I had to, to move it to the next meeting because uh, I, I kind of had uh, a database uh, error today, uh, an hour ago, more or less. And, oh, okay. And I cannot make the presentation properly. So oh, it would be better right. for okay. everyone to make it another week. Okie dokie. You've said previously that next week uh, we are going to have uh, a meeting. And uh, well, well, it would be the 21st. It wouldn't be the 14th. Okay, thank you. Oh, I will fix that. I put it back where it was. Okay. Fair enough. Sorry. No, that's okay. I didn't realize that the, the owner had been the one that pushed it down there. That's fine. Okay. Let's see. In that case, we'll move on to 44906. Add other groups availability when joined a group. You can create challenge. Oh, okay. So this is associated with joinable groups. Um, and if a student wants to, might want to change to another group, but doesn't know if the other groups are full until they unjoin the one that they are already in. So that does actually kind of make sense um, because potentially they could. So there are comments about, um, on the JIRA about whether this could potentially be confusing to students um, as to what they're seeing. Um, when they look at that, if they would see. So you could, Maybe some way hmm. to have like, um, a, I don't know, a, a, a closed section. I mean, the problem is that groups you can join is already a closed section, right? So, um, I was thinking some way of saying like, prior to unjoining, or if you click the unjoin button, maybe it would pop up, it could pop up a little window that says, you're about to unjoin this group. 
If you do, here are some other groups you could join instead. Because right now, I think you just you click the unjoin button and you're you're unjoined. Right. right. So, and then so, it brings you back to the, the page with the list of, of groups that are available to join. Right. So maybe upon clicking the unjoin button, instead of just automatically unjoining, we get a dialogue that says, you're about to unjoin group one. You can now join group, if you do this, you can join group two or group three, but not group four or five, because group four and five are full. <laughs> you know, something like that. Right. Well, so he, here's what I'm thinking. When I'm trying to remember what what the page looks like, um, so I'm looking at the images that are associated with the with the Jira, and they have the the screenshot of um, before you've joined anything in the set. It says groups you can join, and it just lists them. But I'm not sure how it displays. Does it just not display ones that are already full, or does it display them and they say full? No, it doesn't display them at all. So if you look at that third okay. image there, uh, the number three image is showing you how it looks when you've once you've joined. You don't see right. anything else to do with the other groups. You're just yeah. seeing your own and, group. But, in but I'm, I'm looking at image two. What does it display? Does it just not display the group? If, if, say, there was a set three that was full, is that displayed and it says full? Or no, it, it's, it's just gone. not displayed at all? It's just not displayed, I think. Here, let, let me verify that. But I think it, it's just not displayed at all anymore because there's not there's nothing joinable, so it's just gone from that list. Okay. So, because here's what I'm thinking. Would it make more sense to just, on this page, just to always display all the groups with information, okay, either a join button or a full label? No, and, I don't and if think I'm that's if I've joined one, then I see an unjoined button for the one that I'm a member of. I don't think and and, and the other join buttons are disabled, but I can still see what's available. Well, I don't think it's appropriate to show all groups in a list on the page if students aren't members of them. And the reason for that is that you can have groups that are made for accommodations and quizzes and assignments where there may be students with disabilities and you'd be revealing their disabilities to reveal the name of the group and potentially membership of the group inadvertently. Um, so I don't I don't think it should be displaying groups that you're not able to join or a member of. Um, I mean, maybe for joinable right. groups, it would be okay to just display the joinable groups because at some point you could join. And that's them, what right? I was. That's what okay. I was thinking. Okay. About. I was. So just I was just thinking groups. about the joinable groups. Gotcha. Okay. I wasn't necessarily. I wasn't even thinking about the other groups. I was just thinking of it in terms of joinable groups. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Where for you know for each joinable set, it actually lists all of the the groups for that set. And it's just, it, it, there's on the right, in the right-hand column, there's either a join button. If I haven't joined anything, there's a join button for those that are available, a label that just says full, if it's full. And then once I've joined one of those, then I'm going to see either um, unjoin for the one I'm in, a grayed out join button, uh, or full. Well, the thing Does is that make sense? But if you've got a lot of joinable groups, a lot of joinable sets for different projects or whatever, you could potentially have a very long list here that's no longer relevant to the student, right? That's why I was thinking it would yeah. be better to do yeah. it kind of when you click the unjoin button to have that list available. So it's like, hey, you're gonna unjoin this group. If you do this, here's the other groups available to join or not as the case may be. In this um, set in this set right so if you'll have a confirm like it just a confirmation pop up basically so it'll say you click on join and then it gives you a dialogue that says hey you're on joining group one uh if you do this group two and group three is available group four is not or something like that you know th these are the other options that you'll have available to join assuming you 
choose to unjoin this. And then you'd have you you'd say, okay, I see there's some places that I can join, so I'll unjoin this one, and then I can go join the other one. Is there a confirmation screen now for when you click on unjoin, or does it just do it? I think it just does it. I'm I'm just right now checking. I'm looking for a, a joinable group in one of my sites that that has uh, members that are able to unjoin. Hold on a sec. Yeah, it, it just unjoins. I'm playing with it now on nightly. Yeah, like you can create joinable sets, and once someone joins a group from that set. The, all the other sets go away. It shows you the size of the beginning. Um, I really think these this is these are all in accordions now. I feel like the easiest thing to do would be just to add another accordion that says like all groups or something, and then just displays a static list without any action on it kind of displays the original list with the the max size and whatever again. So you can kind of preview and see what's there before you unjoin. And not do anything on that list. Seems easy to implement that. I mean, that's why I was thinking a, a dialogue would be better because then it wouldn't give you all this unnecessary information that could be potentially confusing or overwhelming. You know, it would just yeah. give you the information when you click on join, and then it gives you sort of a, a separate confirmation that says, hey, if you do this, You'll be able to join these other groups and then display that list in that little, you know, I don't know if it would be a modal that might be inaccessible, maybe a separate wind, you know, separate page if it takes you to a separate page or something like that. Just some kind of confirmation because it wouldn't be terrible to like just click on join again if you get to that page and you're like, I don't care if I have to join another group or not. I'm just going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now, this page is in. And now this page is in accordion, so it's not really a problem. They're there, but it doesn't look like these accordions are tabbable. Kind of another issue. Oh, and yeah, that's a problem. So students who are using a keyboard can't actually join any groups. They Fantastic. can join or unjoin any groups. Okay, it's unjoin or unjoin. Oh, great. <laughs> OK, well, yeah. Now, there's another Jira. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's not good. They can't open the accordion, so they can they can join or unjoin if somebody opens the accordion for them with a <laughs> mouse. <laughs> oh gosh, that's that's not good. Okay. But yeah, what it's it would kind of like be a decision between whether it's going to be a modal or just an accordion that's there with that information in it, and it could be both. It could be either. I um I think the accordion. And fixing the accordions would be actually easier than having a accessible pop up, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm just thinking about when is it relevant to the student, right? Like, is it going to be relevant to me to have to open yet a different accordion to see this information before I go to unjoin the group that I'm in? Yeah, like, how is that helpful to me? Like, do you want to preview it before you unjoin, or do you want to click, know you have to click the unjoin button before you're going to know? If you can or not join another group, I mean, the student well, wouldn't maybe, wouldn't know before clicking on join if they're going to see this dialogue. Well, maybe either. we should just have a separate button like preview groups next to unjoin, like a you know where you would click on preview preview joinable groups or something like that. And if you click on that, it'll show you that information, and then yeah. you know that before. Um, so just have it as a separate button adjacent to the unjoin. Yeah, maybe that sounds better. I think, you know, yeah, I wouldn't want it to be like a, a surprise to the students that they had no need to click on join to see this, they, it, having it explicit that they can toggle, a, you know, somehow toggle these and see these other groups. Yeah, I feel like having it as a button might be good because right now, if you have the, if you allow students to see membership of a group, there's a link next to the group that's like membership or something. Um, yeah. So maybe have it as like a, a preview, preview joinable groups or preview other preview other groups in this set, something like that. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, again, that I think that pulls up a modal, that little link to show the membership pulls up a little window for it. Um, and I, I haven't tested that for accessibility, but hopefully it is an accessible little window. <laughs> I don't think it's a modal. I think it's actually a window, not positive. Any other comments on that? Any other thoughts? Button versus a confirmation screen. I like the button idea. We can add that as a comment and um, add that as a comment and create an accessibility issue about those uh, about those accordions. They don't work for the instructor either, so. It's the same, whatever this component is, it's bad. This should just be changed. Okay. Yeah, it looks like when the, um, when the little membership uh, link is clicked, the thing that it opens appears to be keyboard accessible. Um, it's just a matter of getting the accordion open first so you can actually interact with these things. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, I it wouldn't matter to me if the preview is a button or something like the membership where it's a link. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like a button would be more visible and easier to use. And maybe membership should be a button too. I don't know. Yeah. There are a lot of places where I think links should not be used that are being used as links instead of buttons. I feel that link should take you somewhere and buttons should, you know, uh, cause some action to happen, which is what this is doing. So that the membership should probably be a button and I see where that membership is and it, it looks like that would be a, a good solution if it showed like Rather than just membership of that group, it showed um, you know, all the group like kind of um, the group sizes and you know, such like a summary of that joinable set. Well, the problem is that different groups in a joinable set can have the ability to show membership or not. So, like I could create a a joinable set with several groups that allow users to see the membership and several others that don't right. um, and you can see membership sometimes before joining the group or after joining the group or both um, so because those things are configurable i don't think it should be the same link i think it should be a separate one mm -hmm. Okay, well, if one of you could add a comment to that. I lost what tab I wanted.
Okay, so this next one, <clears throat> I had to read over it to see what it was, is regarding to, um, what assignments are displayed in the finder when you're adding a link um, in the editor. So when you have assignments, I'm trying to figure out which ones do not show. So assignments set in the past are not listed in the in the finder when you go to add links. Yeah, that's silly. The server browser should just show all the assignments in the current site. So the question so the there's a comment in the JIRA that says question for the group. Are there cases for closed assignments to be linked to somewhere in Sakai after they've closed? I'd say if you are importing from a previous site and you haven't edited the assignment yep. yet, and also if, let's say, you decide halfway through the course that you have too many assignments and you wanted to link a couple of old ones on lessons to let students see the feedback and just clean up your tool menu and take assignments out of there, then you might still want to link to those old ones so students can yep. access the feedback from it. Come on. Any disagreement that all assignments should be displayed? I would agree with that. I think they should be. But I, I'd commented that this was whoever just decided this. I don't know how far back this goes, but this was an initial decision of the finder. We, we just mm -hmm. never revisited. But I don't know if like it also mentioned draft assignments are not linkable. Um, I I don't know if I, I, I maybe there's a case for that too. I don't know if you'd want to indicate that somehow in EL Finder that assignments are closed or draft. I don't know what that would look like either. Well, I mean, you can link to a draft assignment currently, again, by import. And so I think, again, there is a use case to link to draft assignments to draft content because you maybe don't have that content ready to publish yet, but you want to set up your lessons or whatever. Um, and and link to them. Because would you want to have it like, would you want to have it distinguished? Like, would you want to have it separated? Because like right now, if you see the screenshot, it says like type Sakai assignments. Would you want to have it like, say like open assignments? Or would you want to have it say, um, you know, close assignments? Or would you want to have it like show to the instructor on the, the screen somehow that it's, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's necessary. I mean, okay. it it doesn't, there's that's not possible for tests and quizzes because you can't have a working copy linked you, you have to have it published first so mm -hmm. i guess it's not a problem there but assignments that are in draft form have draft in the title i mean wouldn't they appear with that draft in the title anyway in the binder i mean it doesn't tell you when the due date is or anything in that ui no, i don't think it's no. necessary I mean, the instructor is going to find out when they click on the link or the student's going to find out when they click on the link that they can't access it if it's in the past and not released and, and all that. Okay. I mean, in lessons, can't you link to any assignment, like using the lessons add link to an assignment, add content link to an assignment? I don't know. I would expect the behavior to be similar where you know you can link to anything and if it's not ready yet or it's in draft form then link just doesn't work <laughs> yeah it wouldn't when it wouldn't give the student uh, it would give the students a kind of error if they try to use it yeah it would just say it's not ready yet or not available to you something like that it has a message Okay. 
Yeah, but yeah, fixing this isn't a big deal. I think it actually explicitly filters out certain assignments. So before fixing this, I wouldn't want any potential issues to come up with it. But we we could look to see if uh, the assignments with our draft have draft in the title. Linking it. I, I don't know what it would look like. I mean, again, the question is, how much does it matter, right? Like, if you if you right now import, use import from site to import assignments as drafts to a new site, and those assignments have been linked in CK Editor, the links are still there. Um, so, you know, hmm. I don't know that it would be a problem to make those possible to be established in a current site since you can get them by import. No. Any other thoughts? All assignments should be displayed. Okay, no other comments? We've got time to squeeze in one more. Adding more than one grade book to a site. Yeah, I don't like that idea. I think that is just so confusing, would be so confusing for students. I think instructors should just be managing entering grades themselves. Uh, yeah, if they need to create different categories and weights for each item, then create a different site for each section. <laughs> this just seems like no end of confusion and difficulty in the database to untangle the mess of where these grades are going. I, yeah, it just, no. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think if you were going to implement this, and, and I'm not convinced it's a good idea, don't, don't get me wrong here. I'm just kind of thinking out loud at the moment. I think if you were gonna have multiple grade books within a site, then a student should only be able to be in one of those grade books, and that's the only one they would see. Yeah, but see, the problem is that the database structure would be very hard to make work because you'd have to have several database entries. I, you know, I don't even know how that would be possible to have multiple grade books associated with different weights and different categories and and everything with the same site because yeah i it just well i don't know either but that's not that, my job that doesn't <laughs> yeah that just doesn't seem like a reasonable and worthwhile thing to do it seems to me like in this case you need to create a couple different sites for those different groups 
and you know maybe have a parent you know a, a, another site for the lecture but have your individual section sites for the grade books for the grading process for each of these entirely different grade books right okay i have to to say uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to explain why we are facing the need to implement this uh, within a site uh, which is attached to uh, a signature uh, we have different groups and each one of those groups uh, can be uh, driven by a different teacher and each one of those teachers uh, might want to weight differently uh, uh, the, the, the items, the, the grading items available uh, in, the, in, the, in the site. So we cannot create a different site for each one of those teachers because all those students belong to the same site, to the same um, signature. And teachers cannot wait differently as they want. Uh, as you say, um, each student belongs one to, to, to one and only one group. So uh, this gradebook would be attached to a teacher and the uh, groups that they teach to. I don't know if I'm making my son, myself um, understand. Yeah, I mean, that's clear, but the problem is that there's so much technical difficulty associated with this, in, it seems, that really, you know, you can create multiple sites for the same group. So you can have your, your site where the students are doing the course, and you could even have a separate site where it just has a grade book and the associated students in it. And you could import and export the grades from the different sites. So if you have the students in, in the grade book that's you know, in the main site where it's weighted differently and you just export all of those items, you could import them into the grade book that's appropriate for that group um, in a separate site. And I think that probably would be the best way of handling it in this case so that there's not so much, I mean, I'm just thinking of the nightmare that this would be for testing, like the QA testing mess that this would create beyond, above and beyond the programming mess that it would create of having separate structures of gradebook in the same site. And what happens when you import it? And I, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know either. It's like the, the UI, the, the gradebook ID is the course ID. That's like how it was established. Mm. And so, if you're going to have a second gradebook ID in a course, it would have to have a, an ID that you have to know that there's, you know, there's two IDs associated with that, you know, and then every tool that's linked to the gradebook would have to also be modified to, like, like what assignment would be linked to what gradebook? Would it be linked to the student or every in the external tools? I I don't. It, it just keeps going. I think. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, this seems like just a nightmare to, to develop and test. I, I think that the solution here would be to create separate sites. We have plenty of courses where, you know, an instructor creates a, a site for the course that they do most of the work in and the students participate in. And then they create a site for their lecture or discussions for the individual discussion sections. And the gradebook happens in the discussion section site. And maybe nothing else happens there. It might just be the grading. Um, and, you know, the students, in some cases, if the students don't need to see the gradebook, that grading site can be unpublished. And the instructor yeah. can just do the grading in there. And then at the end, they release the grades to the student. You know, I mean. Yeah, there's there's lots of interesting workarounds I think around that like you can even yeah. have, like you can even have the site as a subsite like you can, so it appears yep. in the navigation you could add the you could possibly add the other site as an external like an LTI tool in your original site and you know if you wanted to make it unpublished um, I feel like there's like hacks within Sakai yeah. that would work better than hacking the gradebook right 
Well, Christina also had added a comment about using Postum um, yep. to provide grades and, 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 you know, calculated. And those, you know, if you're not in the, the right one, then you don't say it. So um, that would be, that's another workaround that, that could, that would alleviate the need to create separate sites. If, if you really didn't want to go the separate site route, um, you could use Postum instead. Um, and then just transfer a final grade into the, you know, so at some me, point into the grade book. I'd say there isn't a solution. I, I know Adrian's working on something to like have just a better like grade book, and maybe he has, maybe he's working on something too there to like that would help this out. But you know, I think whatever's if if those aren't together, then that's going to be a problem too. So for me, for me to understand. Or, or, or just um, to, to, to ask openly uh, for, for the solution that any other one is applying to the situation. Let's, let's see a group where students are offered the possibility to, to be evaluated uh, within, within a final exam. What, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to say it this way. Uh, we have assignments and a final exam. And depending on the amount of, of work that the, they are facing this, this semester, uh, they are offered the possibility to, to, to weight differently the assignments and the exam. If they are going to be uh, able to, to work in a day-by-day -day -day basis, uh, they are offered the, the possibility to, to, to accept the uh, continuous assessment. And if they are not, and they are willing to, to face a final exam, uh, those assessments will, those assignments, sorry, uh, will wait uh, less than the final exam. But they will do the same final exam. How do you solve this situation? So I think that Postum is a good way to do that um, because you can then display whichever uh, grades. I mean, then you'd be doing the calculations in Excel or similar program. Uh, and then the other possibility, as we mentioned, is to create two subsites that you could link to the parent site, one for each group of students. And in your individual subsite, you would create the grade book. Uh, where you put in the weights and you could if you needed to you could send all the grades from the items to the gradebook in the uh, parent site and just not wait them there you could then export that gradebook from that site and import it into the child site that has the gradebook that will be graded um, so you don't have to do anything manually to the grades you just export them from the site where they exist and import them into the site where the grading will happen um, yeah, just use with sites spread. just with a grade book and have link them to the parent site. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no other tools in the sub site, just the grade book. Mm -hmm. And there's in site okay. manage in site info. There's a set, there's a a link that says link to parent site where you can those sites would appear on the on the site, and you just add the students that are associated with that grade book into those sub sites. Okay, we need to check because. I don't think that we are able to create subsites in our institution. So we have to check. Thank you. All right. On that note, we, we're actually over time here. And I have another meeting I need to go to. So I am going to put a stop to this. Um, we don't have a particular topic for our next meeting, if anybody has. Anything, um, let I, either I or Wilma know. Otherwise, we'll we'll take a look at some more jeers. So I will stop the recording now. Thanks all. Thanks. And have a good next couple of weeks. You're welcome. Ciao, ciao.